is now time for our Sunday showdown. We will start with the Raiders and the Dolphins. The Raiders, they are 2-0 under Antonio Pierce, uh, but their playmakers look like they're having some fun. I mean, you got Max Crosby smoking cigars. You got Devontae Adams dancing it up uh, in the locker room, but they do have to face a team that is not from the state of New Jersey. New York? New Jersey. Uh, either way, they got to deal with the Dolphins offense. Dolphins trying to get through some choppy waters. Their schedule going to toughen up a little bit later on, but Rank, do we expect them to return to being the greatest show on turf? I would think so. I know the Raiders have been playing very well, and it's almost disconcerting to see them in the hunt for the AFC playoffs. But at the same time, the Dolphins are one of the top teams in the league, which is why I'm saying you must start, or at least start, Jalen Waddell in this one. He's averaged uh, close to 16 fantasy points per game in his last five, at least six receptions in three of his last four. The Raiders' defense is much improved, but not to the point where I would ever consider sitting Jalen Waddle. I'm going to go with one of his teammates. I think you could start Raheem Mostert in this one. I know Devon Achan is expected to be back this week, but these two can coexist. There was a game earlier this year where they both topped 45 fantasy points. Mike McDaniel said he's going to have to monitor Achan and kind of feel the workload that he could get as the game goes on. So I expect Mostert to remain uh, heavily involved, especially against the Raiders where they allow a lot of production to running backs and I think the, uh, the Dolphins will be playing with the lead in this one, which means probably more touches for the running backs. Even if Devon A. Chen has a condensed workload, I still think you can start him, especially because there are a lot of good running backs on a bye this week. I wouldn't worry about the timeshare. If there's something we've learned this season, it's that you can start your running backs against the Raiders. Vegas has the 31st ranked run defense, third most rushing yards allowed to the position. And even if he doesn't get a lot of touches, Nearly 30% of A-Chan's runs have gone for 10 or more yards this season. He is a big play waiting to happen. So even on a limited snap count, potentially, uh, he could still have a very big game. Meanwhile, onto the Cowboys and the Panthers. Three of the top five fantasy scores last week were on the Cowboys' side. Tony Pollard was not one of them. Mm, anyway, uh, Dak's thrown for over 300 yards in three straight games. Rank, does that continue this week? I would certainly think so. I know that the Carolina Panthers' pass defense – it's been a little suspect over the last couple of weeks, but more importantly, this is about how well Dak Prescott has played. Now, I know in the beginning of the season there was much consternation. He's memed all over the place, but he's had at least 24 fantasy points in four consecutive games. He's the overall QB1 since week six, and one of the things that I've really enjoyed is that he's had three-plus touchdown passes in three consecutive games, and it, it's weird. I know that a lot of times that these coaches love to take shots at fantasy football enthusiasts. Like, this isn't fantasy football, but a fantasy analyst would have told you, get the ball to CeeDee Lamb, and your quarterback will be much better, and that's exactly <laughs> what's happening. These coaches talk about fantasy so much. It's like they play it. Uh, I'm going to say start Tony Pollard, because what could possibly go wrong? It, it's not like he's been letting you down week in and week out but the matchup is too good to get away from here they have allowed the Panthers have allowed the fifth most rushing yards most touchdowns to running backs and the most fantasy points so you just have to start Tony Pollard if he doesn't get it done this week then maybe we talk about pulling him out of your lineup a guy that you don't have to start and I would advise maybe getting away from is Adam Thielen he's had fewer than 50 receiving yards in back-to-back -back games He's playing a lot of his snaps from the slot. That's not really a big surprise there, but the Cowboys have locked down on slot receivers. Uh, just 23 catches, 345 yards, and a touchdown all season long. That's not a whole lot. The other guys in the wide receiver room are struggling to get open consistently. The offensive line not really protecting Bryce Young it gives the Cowboys an opportunity to really focus on the one main playmaker uh, in that Carolina passing game. Uh, another AFC North grudge match. It is the Steelers and the Browns. Steelers uh, are 6-3 and three somehow, and uh, they may get the good fortune of having a couple of backup quarterbacks over the next couple of weeks. We'll see. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we know that Kenny Pickett is going to be out there against Dorian Thompson-Robinson. The Browns, uh, do you still trust their offense rank at this you point? You know, I'm a huge fan of DTR. I remember watching him last year at UCLA thinking that he could come to the NFL and make a contribution. So I have no hesitation in starting guys like Jerome Ford in this one, partly because the Pittsburgh Steelers defense has been very vulnerable to running backs this season, allowing the sixth most rushing yards to the position. And Jerome Ford was amazing in his last game against the Steelers right there. You see the 24.1 fantasy points right there. But if a touchdown was not reversed in week two, he would have had 30.5 fantasy points. I know because I started him in that week. So I'm firing him up again this week against the Steelers.
On the other side in this one, I think you could sit George Pickens against the Browns. And it's not anything with Pickens. It's how he's being used right now. He's ran the third most go routes this year. That's a downfield route. But his quarterback has completed four deep passes all year long. Uh, and the Browns have allowed the fourth fewest explosive pass plays and third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. So given everything that's going wrong right now for him, it's uh, it's like a Drake album. It's scary hours there for George Pickens. Yeah, no good there. Uh, I think you can start Amari. Cooper though and I understand it's not a great situation with the Browns having to go with backup quarterbacks for the remainder of the year but he's the only Cleveland pass catcher I can trust anymore five or more targets in every game this year uh, more receiving yards than the next two Browns pass catchers combined going against a pass defense ranked 22nd in the league fifth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers so whether it's DTR whether it's anybody else back there I think they're going to make it a priority to get the ball to Amari Cooper. Forced into it. <laughs> I get it. I understand. Uh, more Sunday showdowns. We will start with the Jets and the Bills. A lot of drama in New York. There's upstate New York there, the UNY, Western New York, whatever you want to call it. Uh, look, the Bills offense is in disarray. They have moved on from their offensive coordinator. Ken Dorsey is no longer there. Trayvon Diggs is sending out angry tweets about his brother maybe not getting the respect or the targets that he deserves. So, Florio, do you think things are going to be okay coming up this week? Not getting the targets he deserves. He leads the league in catches. Uh, <laughs> I say start Josh Allen in this one. Look, four more touchdowns than any other player player entering week 11. He is a rushing touchdown in seven of his last eight games. I know he disappointed in week one against this Jets defense, but he topped 20 fantasy points both times against them last year. The only quarterbacks that you realistically have that I'd even consider playing over Josh Allen are CJ Stroud and maybe Dak Prescott. Like, I know people are considering Goff, Purdy, Kyler, Fields, stuff like that. I I'm playing the QB1. Give me Josh Allen. I'm going to say Brees Hall is a must start against uh, the Bills defense this week who are bottom five in targets, receptions, receiving yards allowed to running backs. Brees Hall has at least 45 receiving yards in three out of his last four games. And when you watch this Jets offense, it is apparent to everybody watching that number one, Zach Wilson's not good compared to other <laughs> NFL quarterbacks. He's fine. He's better than me. But like compared is to he? other NFL quarterbacks, now he's really good. Like if we were playing flag football, I would want I, Zach Wilson was on a team. I'd be like, you should be the quarterback. But compared to <laughs> NFL passers, not as good. No, not as good. Puma, I don't think it's unfair to say that. I don't think it's unfair uh, to be six. No, it's not a shot. Listen, I don't have hair. Like it's okay. Like sometimes <laughs> you can understand you have limitations in life. Uh, but Brees Hall is not a limitation. Get him the football. Tyler Conklin, he's a deep sleeper this week. And look, by the way, just tip, if you lost Mark Andrews, maybe he's out there on the waiver wire for you. Second on the Jets in targets, receptions, and receiving yards. I know he doesn't have a touchdown yet, but the Jets only have five passing touchdowns all year. Could this be the week? Because teams have been attacking the Bills with tight ends near the goal line over the last month. Six tight end targets and goal-to-go situations have led to three touchdowns. Maybe this is the week. Tyler Conklin cracks the end zone. Who knows? Uh, Bucks and the 49ers last week. Trent Williams and Debo Samuel came back, and they reignited Brock Purdy. Uh, the offense looks like it's back on track. Florio, does that keep on this week? Yeah, it's funny how that works, right? Like, you get all your pieces back. The, the lineup is fully healthy, and Brock Purdy and the offense go back to looking like Brock Purdy and the 49ers offense. And the Bucks have allowed a ton of production through the air, including a top three fantasy quarterback in three of five. If Brock Purdy, and shout out to Research for this one, if he tops 20 for a fifth time this year, it'll be the most by a 49ers quarterback in the last decade. I, I wouldn't play him over Josh Allen, but I would start him on my flag football team. I'm going to go with Mike Evans against the 49ers, which I know seems like kind of an obvious start, but sometimes people get a little bit concerned when you see the 49ers as a matchup, like, oh, they, they have a couple of questions, like, should I be starting him? But you need to realize the 49ers have allowed the third most fantasy points per game to wide receivers over the last month. They've allowed the fourth most receptions to wide receivers this season. Baker Mayfield has made it his mission to make sure that Mike Evans gets paid during the offseason. He's like, listen, I know you're going to be a free agent, Mike Evans. Here's 30 targets per game, <laughs> and uh, it looks like he'll be cashing in this offseason. Shout out to Baker for that. I think you can start Rashad White, maybe because I've kind of planted my flag with him over the last few weeks. Two things have in field his increased value. He's always on the field, and he's gotten a bump in targets since week six, and he hasn't been impacted by negative game scripts. Nearly 60% of his targets have come with the Buccaneers trailing. You might be worried about a fish against the 49er defense. Don't be. I mean, he's never been efficient before. Why should he start now? It's volume that's been winning the day for him. So I think you got to stick with him in that situation. 
All right, let's talk some Chargers and Packers. Chargers took the L last week, uh, but it wasn't Keenan Allen's fault. He was the top fantasy scorer. But, Florio, uh, you're looking at a pair on the other team to maybe put in some work. Yeah, it's a tough week if you're streaming quarterbacks or tight ends, and I know a lot of fantasy managers are. But the Packers could help you because you could stream Jordan Love and Luke Musgrave here. Love gave you a career-high 289 passing yards last week, and he threw multiple touchdowns. The Chargers have allowed the most passing yards and second-most fantasy points to quarterbacks. As for tight ends, they've allowed the most fantasy points to uh, – most yards, I mean, to tight ends. And Musgrave has posted a season high in yards in each of the last two weeks. Again, they're not – you're not fitting them into your lineup unless you absolutely have to, but they might be the best option on the waiver wire for you. I'm going to stay – I'm going to say that you start Quentin Johnson. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just making sure that you're paying attention. No, we're <laughs> sitting him. No, no, no. I know that there's – listen, there's his touchdown. Now everybody's like, is he betting? No, no. They still, there's, it still feels like there's some trust issues with the Los Angeles Chargers. Now I know that there's a lack of uh, uh, Keenan Allen's been injured is what I should say. There's other guys on this team I would feel better about. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about one of them in the hype train. Ooh, stay tuned for that. Uh, I think you can start Aaron Jones, and I know it has been really frustrating. I get a lot of questions about what to do about Aaron Jones. This feels like a get-right week, potentially. The Chargers have been okay against the run, but I think Jones wins as a pass catcher this week. He's been one of the more targeted players in this offense, four straight games with at least five targets. Also, if the Packers get down close, Jones has been the most efficient of the goal line runners there, so I think this is a chance for Aaron Jones to maybe get... I don't know, it's not going to be a huge game, but it'll be better than I think it has been so far this season. Finally, Josh Dobbs is 2-0 with the Vikings. Has posted two amazing Creed-themed videos, and fantasy managers have accepted him with arms wide open. Is the offense going to continue to roll three weeks in a row, though, Florio? I do love that we just referenced the same two Creed songs. I only know, like, two or three of them anyway. <laughs> that's all that's I know it. when it comes to Creed. I'm, I'm going to go with a wide receiver, though, that's near and dear to your heart, Marcus, and Jordan Addison. He has double-digit fantasy points in all but one game this season. He is top 16 five times with over 21 twice in the last month. So, to me, that is a very safe floor and a high ceiling. And he has the highest passer rating when targeted against zone, not on the Vikings, in the NFL amongst wide receivers. And the Broncos use zones. 75% of the time, it feels like a week that you need to start Jordan Addison. Uh, you like Jordan Addison, and while Josh Dobbs has taken a lot of lineups higher, my sacrifice is to suggest to beware of him this week. That's it. I'm done. I'm out of Creed song titles. <laughs> uh, the Broncos have been shutting down QBs over the last few weeks. Since week four against the Bears, when Justin Fields went big, Four of five starting quarterbacks have had fewer than 250 Ooh. passing yards. The last couple of games, they have shut down Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Just one touchdown, four interceptions combined between those two guys. Maybe Dobbs can win on the ground, but the guy who has the most rushing yards against Denver this year, that's Mahomes, who had 31 yards in week six. So maybe you're starting Josh Dobbs, but this is not as much of a pushover matchup as we thought, say, maybe a month ago. We got one guy from the Vikings who will be on the hype. One. That's actually their best song, Puma. Listen, here's my thing. Javante Williams is a start against the Minnesota Vikings. Listen, ever since he's returned, he has been a bona fide starter week in and week out. What I really love is his involvement in the passing game. He's got a great opportunity against the Vikings this week who have been vulnerable uh, against the pass. All right, now time to get back to some of our Sunday showdowns. Matthew Stafford is back for the Rams. On the flip side of that one, Geno Smith coming off a career day in passing yards. So rank when we look at this Seahawks and Rams game, will Seattle's offense continue to click? It should be a little bit better, and it was nice to see Geno Smith get back. But in this matchup, I love DK Metcalf. Because of his history against the Los Angeles Rams, he's had a touchdown for four receiving touchdowns, excuse me, in his last five games against the, the Rams, he scored close to 27 fantasy points in, a, in his last road game in Los Angeles. 11 end zone targets this season. DK Metcalf, good as it gets. Yeah, I'm going to go with some wide receivers, but on the other side, I think you start Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. I know they have been struggling a little bit for their standards as of late, and the Se Seattle secondary has been really tough as of late, but there's still too much upside to get away from this duo. Puka and Tutu Atwell each went over 100 yards in week one against Seattle. Stafford is back, hopefully healthy. I mean, you're not sitting Cooper Cup, and I would still keep starting Puka Nakua everywhere I have him. Stafford coming back lifts this whole offense, which is why I think Daryl Henderson has sleeper vibes this week. Seahawks giving up the 
sixth most fantasy points per game to running backs. And it's not so much the yards, just 83 rushing yards per game to the position. It's the touchdowns. Ten rushing touchdowns, fifth most receiving yards to running backs. So it might not be in the traditional way. And, yes, Royce Freeman may get some snaps, but Henderson has been the lead back since he's rejoined the ball club. On to the Bears and the Lions. Justin Fields is expected to return after missing four games with a thumb injury. Uh, Rank, all feelings aside about Chicago, is Fields a start for you this week? Absolutely. The Bears are going to have to attack this Detroit Lions defense through the air. And one of, no, 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 not a homer. <laughs> this offensive line is now at full strength. Nate Davis expected to return. He'll slide back into his right guard position. And they've protected the quarterback when Tyson Bajit has been back there. And so, for me, I look for them to really establish Justin Fields. He's on a seven-game tryout to remain the quarterback of the Chicago Bears heading into next season. And I really do believe that he's going to do it. <laughs> On the other side, I think you could start both of your lines running backs. There's been battles all year. Like, is it Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery? And the answer last week looks like it's just both. Uh, last week, Jameer Gibbs was the lead running back, but uh, we saw David Montgomery score a touchdown. He had a long run. This is a game where the Lions could be playing with a lead, so they expect a whole lot of running. Both of these guys could potentially be league winners with as well as the Lions are playing right now. I don't care that the Bears are a tough matchup against the run. You have to start both of those two. I don't think you have to start Deontay Foreman this week. Only once this season have the Lions allowed 100 rushing yards in a game. That was against the Ravens in Week 7. Plus, Khalil Herbert expected back, so he's not only going to take some carries, he's going to get a lot of work in the passing game and in the two-minute drill. I expect a negative game script potentially in this one, which means Foreman might see his opportunities sort of condensed, not get as many of them this week against a good run defense.